Praetorium Hotep in 2006. He is the very first Sangarian, reptilian, dragon, vampire that I've ever met, but I didn't know that they were reptilian then. I just thought they were human vampires, and I thought when you got changed into a vampire, I thought that you still got to stay in your body and just have vampire powers. I didn't know that they pushed they actually pushed the human out. But Anyhow, he was one of the seven alchemists in the world under Yugo, the United Grand Lodge of England, and had access to the Philosopher's Stone, the Emerald Tablets. A genius, absolute genius. And for three years, I was in contact. And so I got these. This is what he wrote. And, um, and this explains how a dragon, Latinian, draconian, Sangarian feels being trapped in, being in the human body because they can't just jump bodies. They can astral project and look around and spy on you, but they are anchored to that body and they have to be surgically removed through hermetic alchemy and magic and ritual and whatever. So they're basically stuck in the body. My master mason being put in and out, in and out and out, that's not how it works when a dragon gets put in a human body. Normally they're there for the duration until the body gets old and wears out and they get put, taken out put in a new one. Um, but this is when I first come in contact with the draconians, but I didn't realize that they were dragons yet. Um, he says, okay, so this is from the dragon's point of view. We missed September 20th, 2006. I posted it, but I think it, this was written to me in 2003. Pretty sure. Okay, Freighter I'm Hotep. How do we know what we are? We originate from spirit as individual divine sparks, each with its own inherent intention. And then we fall into materialized flesh formation, and our consciousness becomes narrowed and circumscribed by the levels of the cellular life to which we become to accept ourselves because of the confinement there too. He's talking about the human bodies that they get confined to. It this becomes a sort of self on its own, which has been termed body. Inner reaction produces soul which feels and mind which reasons, because when they're in their reptilian form, their dragon form, they don't feel pain, they can be hurt, but they don't feel physical pain, and they're, they're a lot different than us. They, they only experience the feelings of human emotions to inhabit the human bodies. This becomes a sort of a self on its own, which has been termed body. Inner reaction produces soul which feels, and mind which reasons, as other self-categories of consciousness. Though these non-physical components of ourselves survive bodily death in their own way, because they live to be thousands and thousands of years old and they take different human bodies like Queen Elizabeth I, same dragon as Queen Elizabeth II um, and so through the non-physical components of themselves they survive bodily death in their own way that is not true or immortality which is a condition of spirit alone. And until we, let's talk about the dragons, become fully functioning entities in that category of consciousness, we shall not really be eternal individuals. What has happened in the case of humanity is that we have gradually built up these almost separate selves of our own accounts consisting of the components from our body, mind, and soul area of awareness. Over the eons, we have grown accustomed to accepting these composite constructions or consciousnesses as our entire selves. So like when they inhabit a person, they literally become that person. They absorb their memories, their feelings, their personalities, everything. Of course, they're still aware that they're dragons and they have their memories thousands of years intact. Well, we don't. But Over the eons, we have grown accustomed to accepting these composite constructions of consciousness as our entire selves, more or less taking for granted the assumption that this is all that we may ever be. He's talking about the dragon and having the human. Moreover, a large portion of humanity, humanity is content to confine its self-seeking 
definitely to these relatively artificial life limits. The majority of mankind has little inclination to advance beyond secondary self-states, states which satisfies its immediate demands for persistence or projection. Then again, there are humans who feel or know instinctively that their me makeup is unsatisfactory in some way. And so they struggle around from one incarnation to another in an attempt to set themselves up in some kind of or order. A few of them may eventually succeed at drawing the line through themselves which connect their initial, initial cigarette sucks. Sorry, Prater, I'm hotep, I didn't mean to interrupt your flow. Um, a few of them may eventually succeed in drawing the line through themselves which connects their initial, initial intentional identity with their correct cosmic course of completion. And so the circle of initiates of living light increases. That is the central and principal point of true self-seeking in its mystical and magical sense, lining up all the projected parts of self-extension so that they carry the initial intention of our almost innermost identity around what could the, around the complete cosmic circle of autonomous awareness, thus becoming what it will. In old-fashioned words, this is doing the divine will or the will not mine be done. In fact, it is simply being oneself in the deepest meaning of the phrase. To be oneself is necessary to know oneself. And the mystery dictum points out, let us face the problem squarely and sincerely. How many individuals on earth are or ever can be the selves that they truly could be deep down in their basic being? How much of the apparent selves we present to everyone else, how much of the apparent self that we present, the dragons, present to everyone else is genuinely and truly us? And how much is nothing but a convenient cover or a camouflage, you know, the human bodies, that we have collected around us for various reasons? What do we take into ourselves because we will or want to and what gets forced upon us because of what others wish us to do or appear to like for their benefit rather than ours. Which part of our makeup is really ourselves? And what rem remainder have we borrowed from humans, you know, or have inflicted on us in a lifetime? Uh, that indeed should be available for inclusion in us that we seem unable to achieve for any reason. What prevents the process of our own self-perfection and how close can we, you know, the dragons, come to being our actual selves amid the circumstances and the constrictions of our human earth lives, you know, the bodies they get stuck in? These are all very vital and pertinent questions indeed, and they concern everyone. Self-becoming is the life purpose of every soul on this planet, or everywhere else for that matter. If we are prevented from carrying out this purpose or deliberately refuse to recognize it, then we are in trouble. The proportion of human ills and afflictions arising from this very cause is almost incalculable. How can we be healthy, happy, and worthwhile humans while our self-systems are in such a shocking, least disordered condition? We are surely justified in using whatever corrective methods may be called for, including magic, if it seems likely to help sort ourselves out in the correct cosmic category. So, like the dragons, when they ha inhabit the humans, they feel the pain and the old age and the suffering, and they feel all the emotions that we feel. And now, um, well, Frater, I'm, he's wrote me some really good stuff a long time ago, but he would not talk to me at all since 2005, when the last time I was there, Hermetic Alchemy. Um, but still, I always, I still sought Greater Amhotep out as being a potential rail king because I could see his power, I could feel it, his magic, his numbers, for like 
over a year I pestered the hell out of him because he, he wasn't real social and I mean I pestered, pestered him just because I felt something, I knew there was something really special and intelligent about him and it turned out he really was and he was my first communication and he's the first one that got me behind the veil I suppose in a sense and he told me with my intuition and my abilities and everything he told me that he has students that he's had for 20 years that aren't even close to being able to tap into what I tap into. He told me that I have access to the tree of life, the thirdic realm and the upper realm or whatever, and that the magicians here and the wizards here are, um, they can only do their magic on the thirdic realm. But Frater Amhotep actually wrote me back for the first time since 2005 the other day because I was reading his stuff online and I, they deleted it and he wanted to know why. So right now I'm going to be reading some things about Fre from Freighter I am Hotep, who, look online, he's a genius. He's an alchemist and he's a dragon. Actually the same dragon that inhabited Vlad Dracul is the same dragon. Dracula. <laughs>